Yo, what's going on users? Robert Warshak here, and we've got some super exciting news, and that's going to be the upcoming Hearthstone expansion, Madness at the Dark Moon Fair. This is something we've been speculating a while now. Today is, of course, the announcement. They announced all sorts of new features, cards, even the new game mode. So in this video, we'll be tackling the new cards and mechanic that got released. After that, I'll be doing a guide on the new game mode when I can play it and make that for you guys. So a question that we all want is, when is this expansion releasing? It's going to be November 17th, which is, seems very, very early. Naturally, uh, the expansion comes at the end of year sometime in December so November 17th is just next month we're less than a month away from the new expansion which is pretty incredible and we have some incredible cards to take a look at as well so let's jump right into it we've got Cthoon Cthoon is back and this is a 10 mana 6-6 six, six, so same stats as we've had previously but his ability is drastically different and this is going to be at the start of the game break into pieces battle cry so when you put all the pieces together deal 30 damage randomly split among all enemies including their face so this is very much so a control card very much so a very late game win condition so let's take a look at the requirements to get this guy down so in order for this guy to be played when you put him into your deck at the start of the game he'll split into these pieces these are all five mana and their abilities vary so we've got a deal seven damage randomly split among all enemies deal three damage to all minions summon a six six cthoon's body with taunt and then destroy a minion so Individual these aren't necessarily super powerful, but they're not essentially really bad. A five mana deal three to everything's pretty good. A five mana deal seven, uh, randomly split among enemies is pretty good. A five mana six six with taunts kind of rough, and then a five mana destroy a minion is kind of rough. But once all of these are played, it'll shuffle the main Cthulhu into your deck, and then which you when you draw this guy, he'll do thirty damage. So we'll see this in a very much so control decks. Obviously, this is a very late game card, and I'm looking very much so in playing this in some form of control warrior slash possibly a control warlock, because I'm assuming the faster you can draw these things, the faster you play them, the faster you can get Cthune out. So we may see this in maybe a, a form of hyper draw druid, uh, which we've seen in the past with like Chef Nomi and stuff, but I'm really excited for Cthune. And not only do we have Cthune, we actually have all of the old gods, and they're all legendaries. So let's take a look at the next one, and that's going to be Nazoth, the god of the deep. Uh, we have a 10 mana, 5-7, so same stats as he had previously. Battle cry, resurrect a friendly minion of each minion type. This does not seem to be as powerful as his old form, which used to just uh, battle cry, resurrect all the death rattle minions that died this game. So I think what we may see with this card is decks that are like amalgams. Um, so they correspond to multiple different classes. So it'll summon all of these guys. So obviously running this in like a beast deck, it would only summon a, you know, a minion of each type, which would just be the beast. But if you have amalgams, it's going to summon multiple of the amalgams and they could be pretty powerful cards like we see in bgs if you're familiar with that so i think this might be a card that we see in a new type of deck and that might be a deck like i said that revolves around multiple different types of minions like amalgams taking a look at yashiraj this is the 10 mana 10 10 same stats as we previously seen in the past it's battle cry add a copy of each corrupted card you've played this game to your hand they cost zero this turn we haven't taken a look at the corrupted cards yet because i wanted to take a look at the old gods first but this is an extremely super value card and when we cover the corrupted cards you're going to see that zero mana corrupted cards are very 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 good and this is a huge sort of tempo slash value swing because they're going to cost zero mana which means you can play them immediately and then last but not least this is the probably craziest of all of the old gods of course it is yog saron and this is very very much so like we've seen in the past it's a 10 mana 7 5 stats again line up completely and a battle cry if you cast 10 spells this game spin the wheel of yogs around the old yog would just cast random spells this one you have to play 10 spells to cast him and his ability is going to be this cog wheel here so when you play him this wheel is going to spin and it is going to land on a random spot that spot besides the one they all have 19 percent besides that one that has five percent the one that has five percent is cast pyroblast until a player is dead so there's five percent of the time when you play this card Pyroblasts are just going to fly and until someone's dead. It's 
fucking crazy. The other percents that are all at 19 are fill your hand with random spells. They cost zero this turn. Fill the board with random minions, then gives yours rush. Take control of three enemy random minions. Cast a random spell for every spell you've cast this game. Targets are chosen randomly, so the mystery box is the same ability he previously had before. And then the other one is destroy all other minions, gain their attack and health. All of these incredibly powerful absolutely insane this card is nuts looking at competitive hearthstone this card is absolutely terrible for competitive hearthstone if you're looking at content creation and casual hearthstone this card is probably one of the most fun cards that you can imagine because every time you play them it's going to be different and each time it's different it's going to be even different than that because the cards you're going to get the stuff he's going to do the board state that you play him in is constantly going to be different each and every game so just looking at the four old gods here and only looking at these four cards in this expansion the first four cards we're even looking at in the dark moon fair expansion this is already a shit ton to talk about and already i'm sure you guys have some shit to say so i'm interested just in these four old gods what do you guys think? Because this is absolutely nuts. Moving to some normal Hearthstone cards with normal abilities that have the new corrupt mechanics so we can kind of see how Yash Raz fits in here. Let's take a look at Dunk Tank. This is a four mana shaman spell and it's deal four damage, corrupt, then deal two damage to all enemy minions. So the new corrupt mechanic, this occurs when you play a card that has a higher mana cost than the card itself. So for example, in order to activate Dunk Tank's corrupt mechanic, you have to play a five mana card or more at any point in time. And then this card's corruption will occur. And when it gets corrupted, they actually get new art, which should look like this. So, so I've been talking about sort of mechanics and cards that follow the same route as, do you play the card without its corruption at just four mana on curve? Or do you save the card for later and get more value out of it? Because then later on, when you can play bigger spells that cost more, you can get the additional corrupted ability as well. And this basically allows control decks to save cards and not always have to use them for a better case scenario later. It also makes you think about, hey, do I play this now or do I save it for later for more value? And we actually saw that uh, previously with the Spellstone mechanic. As you went through the game, the card was already good, but as you move through, it could get more and more powerful. And that's kind of the corrupted mechanic uh, that we see here. I like it a lot. It's uh, gonna reward the control decks, I think a little bit more than anything, just because we like the games going on longer. And this is a mechanic that synergizes with that. Taking a look at another corrupted card, this is going to be a neutral 4-4 beast. It has a rush, so a 5 mana 4-4 with rush, already pretty good, but corrupt gained 4 plus 4. So if this is in your hand and you play a 6 drop before you play this card, this is going to be a 5 mana 8-8 eight eight with rush, and it's a beast. So as we can see here, the corrupted mechanic is going to turn these things into quite the powerhouse. Moving to Silas Darkmoon, this is actually going to be a card that everybody's going to get for free before the expansion even hits by just logging on, and he's going to be a 7 mana 4 4 battle cry, choose a direction to rotate all minions. So this is a mechanic that we haven't seen at all, very similar to like a carousel. If you choose a direction like, let's say, left, it's going to move your leftmost minion to your opponent's and your opponent's rightmost minion to your board. Remember, this is only going to be one minion and Silas can actually be part of that rotation himself. So for example, if you have only one minion, Silas out, and you choose left or right, no matter what, you're still losing Silas, but you get to pick which opponent minion you want based on if you choose right or left. I can see this being an insanely kind of meme -y card, given if there's a couple death rattles or maybe a doomsayer on the board that you could give your opponent and clear the board that way. Granted, again, this seems like more of a fun card than it is a really powerful card, but it's another neutral legendary that you can throw into decks for a nice family friendly time. Heading on over to a new Paladin card, we have a 3-mana Day at the Fair, Summon 3, a Silver Hand, Recruits, Corrupt, Summon 5. So previously, we had a Paladin card that cost 5 mana and would summon 5 recruits, and it was a very good card. Now we have a 3-mana Summon 3 or a 3-mana Summon 5. I think this card is exceedingly powerful for the fact that it is common and the fact that it basically only gets better and already a 3-mana Summon 3 dudes is a pretty good card in itself. So this, in my opinion, is a pretty good day at the fair. Taking a look at the next card, which is a Druid card, is a two mana draw a card. 
guess if your next card costs more or less to draw it. So, for example, if you draw a Nourish, a six mana card, and you guess your next card is going to cost less than six, and you're right, you actually get that card draw. So it's a two mana possibly draw two. What I like here is they took the flavor of like a fair sash like game and they put it into a draw mechanic. So getting this wrong makes this card terrible and getting this right makes this card really, really good. And this is going to reward the players that know what cards are in their deck, the probability of drawing a particular card that's in their deck based on what they have in their hand, what they've played and what remains. So I don't think this card is amazing, but I do think this card is possibly okay. But I'm honestly, Druid has enough ramp and draw right now that I don't think that this is going to be needed. It may be a card that we see played later on, but I don't think it's going to be played right away. Taking a look at the Druid legendary minion we have a four mana two two battle cry add a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse into your hand so for those of you who play world of warcraft you're very familiar into the boomkin dps and these are spells that you cast quite often and we switch back and forth based on how much lunar and solar energy we need so what is a solar eclipse and lunar eclipse boom we have a two mana lunar eclipse here deal three damage to a minion not to anything to just a minion and your next spell this turn cost two less so this is basically a zero mana deal three to a minion because you're gonna be able to reduce the next spell you cost by two looking at the solar eclipse your next spell this turn cast twice this solar eclipse i think is what's going to be the most powerful of the two and that's because on turn four you can blossom into solar eclipse into overgrowth on turn four and gain four mana crystals which puts you at nine mana the following turn if you overload two so you have seven available which is pretty damn good as we know casting spells twice is very very powerful taking a look at vargoth who just happens to do this same thing and being able to put this in a card and hit only have to cost two mana I think is super powerful and we can kind of see the power level of those cards granted because this is a four mana two two and it's going to give you each of these spells and I'm glad this card isn't overly statted plus having these cards be put in your hand because these cards are already like really really good right so I'm glad they're statting minions appropriately to basically how good the cards they provide or their abilities are. Moving to, I think, the lowest attack and defense of any 10 mana card in the game. We have the Dark Moon Rabbit. This is a 10 mana 1-1. One, one. Rush, Poisonous, and it also has Cleave, and that means it damages the minions next to whoever this attacks. So if your opponent has three minions out, it's a 10 mana kill three minions i think this is sort of a notch at possibly conjuring calling onto these 10 mana cards because if you conjure a 10 mana you most of the time you're going to hit like some 8 8 plus minion right um now there's a chance you're going to get this rabbit and it may not be the best thing because if your opponent doesn't have any minions this card is just gonna it's very easy to kill right but if your opponent has quite a few minions and you're looking for something with rush and can kill stuff this is like the absolute perfect card you could get. So I think this put even more swinginess into the Conjurer's Calling because the stat lines and what this does is so, so far away from the current 10 mana cards that are in the pool. And taking a look at the last card that we have for today, and as we know, more cards will get released, and I'll cover them as fast as possible. We have the 5 mana 3-3 three, three Fortune Teller Taunt. Battlecry gain 1 plus 1 for each spell in your hand. So obviously, we have cards like with the Yogg, that's going to synergize with playing spells, so we may, we may see more spell heavy decks nowadays so average stats for like a five mana taunt would be like a seven seven or like a six six which means you have to have at least three or four spells in your hand in order for this guy to be even good he's got a battle cry which means that if he gets rezzed he's gonna be only a three three with taunt the fact that he's a mech i mean i don't know for top decking purposes he seems pretty bad for resurrect purposes he seems pretty bad in a spell heavy deck i guess he could be good but towards like turn five and stuff i mean how many spells do you expect to have in your hand let's say best case scenario you have like seven spells in your hand right he's a five mana 10 10 and right now if you look at like rogue for example they're playing like three mana four mana edwins and those things are like 12 12s <laughs> so i actually don't think this card is very good at all i think this is just like kind of one of those cards that if you randomly generate he's just a five mana three three with taunt 
maybe a little bit more than that. But I don't think this would be a card that anyone ever main decks. <laughs> all right, so that's going to wrap up all the cards that we have thus far to review and look at. Guys, <laughs> what are we thinking here? Because there's a lot to break down. And also keep a lookout for the new game mode video I will be posting, hopefully very, very shortly, if I can get everything I need to get done. So with that, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Of course, I'm Robert Warshak, and happy whatever the hell day it is.